Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father Abba, I come to you today, Lord, asking you to guide my tongue and have me to say only those things that you want your people to hear. In your son's name, I pray, and so be it. Hey, y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about what's wrong with the Jewish religion. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the scripture and why it calls the Jewish religion the synagogue of Satan. Now, before we get started, you must understand that I'm not talking about the Jewish people. They are, in fact, only victims of the Jewish religion. At least some of them are. Once we find out what's wrong with the Jewish religion, we'll realize not all of the Jewish people take part in that synagogue of Satan. But anyway, let's get into it. Looking here at Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9, which is part of the message to the persecuted church, those that are being persecuted for their faith in this time. That's the church of Smyrna, as we see there in verse 8. But verse 9 says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Notice how it says that they say that they are Jews. And that's the same thing that it says down in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 9. This one is addressing the favorite church, like we see there in verse 7. And you'll notice one thing unique about these two churches. Out of all seven, these are the only two that our father doesn't have a problem with. The other ones, he tells them that they're doing something wrong except for those who are being persecuted and those that are favored appear to not be doing anything wrong. But anyway, that's just a fun fact. We're talking about verse nine, which says, and I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So this is a prophecy here about this so-called synagogue of Satan and how they're going to be proven wrong in the end times. And a lot of them talking about the Jewish people would actually seek out the members of this favorite church as they try to find out what true worship is all about. But notice how it says that he's going to make them the synagogue of Satan. To me, that sounds like they're going to be exposed for their treachery, which we're actually going to expose in this video. We're going to talk about exactly what it is that they're doing wrong. And if you're still one of those people who are confused, thinking that it is Israel that's over in Jerusalem right now, I bring your attention to Luke chapter 21 and verse 24, which tells us that those in Jerusalem now are actually Gentiles. Some of them may actually be Israel when we understand who true Israel is today. It has nothing to do with blood ties or what religion you're in or who your parents were or where you're from. In fact, in the third testament of the Bible, in chapter nine, we learn that the name Israel is actually a spiritual name. It is those who worship in spirit and truth that are true Israel. But the majority of the people in the Jewish religion, especially the ones over in Jerusalem right now, are actually Gentiles. And we're going to prove it here in a second. I just want to make sure that you understand that Israel is actually a spiritual name because there will be many confused when we talk about these verses addressing the Gentiles in that synagogue of Satan. And they'll say, well, our father fights for Israel. Well, absolutely, he fights for Israel. But Israel is a spiritual name taken incorrectly to designate a race of people. Like I said, it has nothing to do with your race. We learn over here in chapter 39 and verse 14 that Israel are those who receive his charity, fills his presence, is sustained by his bread and awaits him. So what's wrong with the Jewish religion? 
Why does the Messiah call those people trodden down the courts in Jerusalem Gentiles? Why does Zechariah in chapter 14 prophesy about a huge rock that's supposed to come and destroy that city altogether? That's the same rock that we heard about in the book of Daniel that's supposed to disrupt all of the world economies. Well, we see here in Zechariah, it just so happens that stone is actually going to land on Mount Olives, turning it into a crater. Well, I know what some of you guys are thinking. It's because they actually deny the Messiah. Not all of them. Some of the people who recognize themselves as Jewish people actually believe in our Messiah. The Christ came in the flesh 2,000 years ago. But we're not talking about them. We're talking about the religion, which as a whole rejects Yeshua as the Messiah. They teach the Jewish people to believe that the Messiah didn't actually come in the flesh and they're actually still waiting for the Messiah. Well, according to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3, that makes them the Antichrist. It says the same thing in 2 John chapter 1, that anybody who refuses to declare Yah's son as the Christ come in the flesh is by definition the Antichrist. But that's too easy. Everybody knows that. And that doesn't necessarily make them the synagogue of Satan, else every non-believer in the world would be the synagogue of Satan. No, what makes them the synagogue of Satan is how they actually are worshiping the golden calf. At least those following the Jewish tradition. They try to teach people that they're following the laws or the instructions of our father, which he gave to Moses at Mount Sinai. But... They're not actually doing that at all. We're going to find out here. They're actually worshiping the golden calf. Similar to what they were doing back there in 1 Kings in chapter 12 with Jeroboam, who set up similar festivals as those talked about in Leviticus 23 on different days of the year. Well, this is what makes the Jewish religion the synagogue of Satan, because they're actually doing that today, causing many people to worship our father during his feast days on different days and not the correct day according to the scripture. We're going to take a look at each one of these feast days individually, those that they call Jewish holidays. But since I said I was going to prove that those people trodden down the courts in Jerusalem are actually Gentiles, let's come over to the book of Jubilees in chapter 6 that explains how the sacred calendar is supposed to work. And explains to us down in verse 35 that if we don't hearken unto the correct reckoning of the sacred calendar, we're actually going to be doing the feast of the Gentiles. In other words, we're going to be celebrating the feast days on the wrong day. And in fact, worshiping the golden calf instead of worshiping the most high. Let's come back up here to verse 32, which says, And command the children of Israel that they observe the years according to the reckoning, 364 days, and these will constitute a complete year, and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feast, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. So I ask you, have you ever heard anybody from the Jewish synagogues talk about how the year has 364 days in it? No, that's not how the Jewish calendar works at all. Like we read over here at JustTor.org, the Jewish calendar uses a complicated system to determine their holy days. That's why a lot of people have to rely on the Jewish synagogue and its leaders to tell them when the holy days fall. In other words, they have to have a Jewish calendar and they can't really figure the holy days out for themselves. Like those who use the 364 day system to reckon their days. So in other words, instead of relying on our father's sacred calendar and the way it's supposed to work, the Jewish synagogues actually dictate to them their dates and they actually change them sometime according to the Gregorian calendar. Let me show you what I mean. 
As part of their complicated method of determining their feast days, they refuse to allow their feast that they call Rosh Hashanah to fall on a Sunday, a Wednesday, or a Friday. Now, how does that even make sense, considering that Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday were not even a part of any calendar until 1582 when the Gregorian calendar came into effect? In other words, when our Messiah walked the earth, there was no such day as a Sunday. When the earth was created, nobody had heard of a Wednesday. And when Moses was given the laws, Friday didn't even exist on any calendar in the world at all. Not until the year 1582 AD. So how is the Jewish synagogue now dictating that this festival is not to fall on any of these days? What happens when the sacred calendar says that it does? Well, they just change it to another day. And those following the Jewish calendar will be worshiping that particular holy day on a different day of the year. But we're going to come back to this Rosh Hashanah as we look at their holidays. And notice that I don't call them holy days because they're not keeping them on the right day. They're not using the 364 day system. And because they're not doing so, like we see back in verse 32 in the book of Jubilees, chapter six, their feast days are disturbed because they're not using the 364 day system. There's no way for them to actually get the feast days correct throughout the year. Like we read here, it is necessary to use this 364 day system else they will lose track of the feast days like we see in verse 32. Verse 33 says that they will lose track of the seasons and the years, which is why the Jewish synagogue teaches that we're in the year 5783, which means that our Messiah has about 217 years to go before he's expected to return. Do you believe that we have 217 more years to go before our Messiah returns? Of course not. The reason they do is because they've lost track of the years, just like Moses said that they would in the book of Jubilees. And then notice in verse 34, it says they would lose track of the new moons, the seasons and the Sabbaths. That's why they celebrate their Sabbath day on Saturday. They found a Talmudic law which says that since they don't know the correct day of the Sabbath day, they can choose any day that they want. And because the Christians chose Sunday, the first day of the week, they chose Saturday, which is on the Gregorian calendar system. And like we said earlier, there was no Saturdays when this law was implemented. So it's clear that they're celebrating their Sabbath days on the wrong day. So those following the Jewish synagogue are taught to keep their Sabbath days on the wrong day. And it says down in verse 35 that they will actually start keeping the feast of the Gentiles. So how is the sacred calendar supposed to work? Instead of a complicated system and relying on the Jewish synagogue to tell them the day of the month, we're actually supposed to depend on the sun, the moon, and the stars. The stars tell us what season we're in. The sun tells us what time of day it is. And the moon is what's used to determine our feast days and our months. And notice here in the book of Enoch, in chapter 73 of first Enoch, the month begins when the new moon appears. And this is where you find separation in the Jewish community. While there are some who go out to verify the appearance of the new moon every month, the leadership of the Jewish community relies on their complicated system, which aligns with the Gregorian calendar as they choose their months. Let me show you what I mean. We're over at jfedstl.org looking at at the Jewish holidays. We're going to go down through this list of holidays and compare them 
to Leviticus 23, which tells us about all of the festival days given to Moses in one place. Notice how it starts off talking about the Sabbath day. It says, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So this is why they choose Saturday for their Sabbath day. It obviously appears on the Gregorian calendar, which is a man-made calendar altogether. But like Moses said in Jubilees, they've forgotten the new moons. And so they don't use that in the reckoning of their Sabbath day. The way it's supposed to work is we have a new moon sighting, which starts the first day of the month. But of course, the first day of the month, like we read about in Ezekiel chapter 46, is a holy day in itself, just like the Sabbath day is. So the actual first work day starts on the second day of the month. You see how the commandment says six days shall work be done. It's not saying that there's a Sabbath day every seven days. It's saying that you work six days and then you take a Sabbath day. Well, since the first day of the month is a holy day and a Sabbath day of its own, the second day of the month is the first work day, making the eighth day of the month the actual Sabbath day, along with the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th day of every month. And then there's a new moon that actually resets the calendar and resets the Sabbaths to another day on the planetary week. And if you didn't know, planetary week is talking about days like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, we're looking here in the month Tishri in the year 5994, which we've covered in another video. I can show you how we calculate that as the correct year that we're actually in giving us more like seven years before our Messiah is to return, opposed to 217. But anyway, you notice that in Tishri 2022, the Sabbath days fell on a Wednesday on the planetary week. And then we had the appearance of the new moon that fell on a Wednesday, starting the month bull which meant that the first day of the month fell on a Thursday and each of the Sabbath days for the rest of that month also fell on Thursdays. And that's the way it's supposed to work. But because the Jewish synagogues failed to accept or use the 364 day system, they've lost track of how the Sabbath days work. And so now they're keeping their Sabbath days on Saturn's day, which is all part of Saturnalia. So those following the Jewish calendar and or the Jewish synagogue will actually be keeping their Sabbath days on the wrong day every single day out of the year. So think about that for a second. You've gone to these people for instruction and the first instruction they give you is to break the Sabbath day, which is probably the most important rule in all of the scripture. To keep the Sabbath day holy. Well, because many of those in the Jewish synagogue are unable to rely on our father for their food, clothing and shelter. They actually have to depend on their jobs for their income. And since their jobs require them to work according to the Gregorian system, they have to declare Saturday as their Sabbath day and not allow their parishioners or their followers to understand when the true Sabbath days are. In other words, they have to tell them that the Sabbath day falls on a Saturday because they have to work on Thursday and they don't want to sound like a hypocrite telling their followers to take their Sabbath day on a Wednesday or a Thursday when they get to take every Saturday off. But anyway, that's just the start. When we're over here looking at the festivals on the Jewish calendar, we see the first one that falls is what they call New Year's of the Trees. 
And notice how it falls really close to the Gregorian calendar, New Year's Day. And we're going to find many of these days do that on the Jewish calendar, which seems to be aligning with the Gregorian calendar. But who's ever heard of New Year of the Trees? We don't see that in Leviticus 23 at all. So let's go on. The next holiday on our list is Purim which is a post-exilic feast and is a celebration of the breastplate, the lots that we hear about they're making in the book of Exodus. It's one of the first festivals on the Jewish calendar because they're starting their New Year's in January, just like the Gregorian calendar. But anyway, it's a post-exilic feast. The first festival we see that corresponds to something that we see in the book of Leviticus in chapter 23 is the Passover. But notice how they celebrate the Passover, concentrating on the leavening or material yeast and baking soda and all of that stuff that makes bread rise. Sure, we're supposed to get that stuff out of our houses too. But we remember that the Messiah told us that we're supposed to be avoiding the leavening of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which is the doctrine that those guys teach. We see that in Matthew chapter 16, verses 6 and verse 11, when he told the disciples and then down in verse 12, they figured it out that he was talking about the doctrine. So that's actually how we're supposed to be celebrating the week long feast of unleavened bread or Passover, as they call it, is by avoiding the doctrines taught by these Pharisees and these Sadducees and actually getting back to the scripture. But notice that they don't mention that at all and only concentrate on what they're eating and not what they're learning. It's because these leaders of this Jewish synagogue are refusing to teach their people that they're actually supposed to be avoiding what they're teaching, at least for that week. But these are the words of the Messiah, who they don't recognize anyway. If they did, they will remember that on his Passover celebration, he had communion. That what they call the Last Supper, we should actually refer to it as the First Supper, because that's when he instituted the New Covenant with the bread and the wine there on Passover evening. So whereas you would have some people in the Jewish community drinking wine on Passover, it's not a part of the celebration of the synagogue as a whole. So in their rejection of the Messiah, they're actually rejecting the main element of the purpose of the reason why the Messiah came. We've heard that he washed us with his blood it was actually that wine that represented his blood that cleanses us every single year. Well, and I know what you're thinking. The Jewish faith doesn't recognize Yeshua as the Messiah. Well, that makes them the Antichrist like we talked about earlier. But anyway, let's look at the next festival on their list, which is called Yom Hashua or something like that. It's what they're calling Holocaust Remembrance Day. But you should ask, where is that on the sacred festival days? We see Passover talked about down in verse 5. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread talked about in verse 6. And the next festival that we hear about is the Feast of First Fruits down in verse 10. So let's look at this closely. They celebrated Passover on April the 16th through the 23rd. And looking back at our sacred calendar for Nisan in the year 2022, and we see that they got that one right because that placed Passover on Sunday, which was the same day they had Easter. So in other words, while many of us was celebrating Passover, the rest of the world was going on Easter egg hunts. But anyway, we see that first fruits was actually supposed to fall on the 23rd day of the month Nisan, which would have corresponded to April 25th. So instead of recognizing the festival of first fruits, 
which we don't see on the Jewish festival days at all. It's not a part of their feast days. They've actually skipped it and are celebrating a day that they made up called Holocaust Remembrance Day, which is actually a double whammy from the Jewish synagogue because not only is it skipping a feast, but it's actually having this day of remembrance here for their Holocaust after they failed to remember the days of remembrance that are talked about in the book of Jubilees. You see back up there in chapter six and verse 23, it says that there are four days of remembrance. These are the four seasonal days that change our calendar from 360 days to 364 days. Noah was told and Moses wrote down that these days are supposed to be remembered every year. But when we look back at the Jewish holidays, there's no mention of a day of remembrance, which should have fell sometime between Purim and Passover. See where it says the days of remembrance fall on the new moon of the first month. That would be New Year's or what the Hebrew Bible would call Rosh Hashanah. There's no mention of a Rosh Hashanah in the springtime at all. In fact, they actually moved Rosh Hashanah all the way down to the fall and have people celebrating the new year in September. And there's no mention of a new year in March at all. It's not even a part of their calendar. They only remember their Holocaust Remembrance Day. So they've actually missed two very important days and the year is just getting started. The next day they recognize is their National Memorial Day, which falls in May, just like the Memorial Day on the Gregorian calendar. That one is not found in Leviticus 23 at all. Neither is Israel Independence Day, which they celebrate in May as well. So it seems like they're making their holidays all about them. But we learned in the third testament of the Bible that Israel is a spiritual name. So if the Jewish synagogue was not the synagogue of Satan, their holidays would be centered around all of us and not just these days like Jerusalem Day, which is a celebration of their six day war. But anyway, the next festival we see in Leviticus 23 is Shavuot or the Feast of Weeks. But notice the date that they have here. June the 5th in the year 2022. But according to Leviticus 23, we were supposed to start the 50 day count on a date of first fruits, which would have put preparation day or Pentecost on June the 14th. So they're actually celebrating that day, one of the high holy days, one of the mandatory feast days that we read about in Exodus chapter 23 in the book of the covenant. They're actually celebrating it on the wrong day. What's funny is how their Feast of Shavuot, as they call it, coincidentally falls around the Christian holiday of Pentecost. The thing about the Christian holiday of Pentecost is actually based on Easter Sunday, 50 days out of their Easter Sunday. So their Feast of Weeks is tracking more with Easter than it is with our first fruits. But even if it's not, it's still on the wrong day because they didn't start it according to the right timing. So in other words, the people who are following the Jewish calendar are getting the Feast of Weeks wrong every single year. As long as they have been following the Jewish calendar, they haven't done the Feast of Weeks on the correct day, not even once, because they've been at least a week too early every year. The next festival on their list is Tisha B'Av, which is saying the 10th day of the month of, remembering the destruction of the first and second temples in Jerusalem. But when we look back over in 2 Kings in chapter 25, where we hear about this destruction of the first temple, we see in verse 3 that it wasn't on the 10th day of the fourth month, but actually the ninth day of the fourth month. I'm sorry, looks like I got a little bit confused because Av is actually the fifth month. 
So they've actually skipped the fourth month fast altogether. There should have been a fast of the fourth month mentioned. They're commemorating what we saw back there in First Kings. There's actually four fasts that started back there in Second Kings. The fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth. But there's no mention of the fourth at all. They are mentioning the fast of the fifth month, but notice that Second Kings talked about it occurring on the seventh day, not the tenth day. So where they've skipped the fourth month fast, they have declared the fifth month fast on the tenth instead of the seventh. So again, they have their people celebrating that festival day on the wrong day. And that brings us to Rosh Hashanah which is their holiday they celebrate for the new year in the seventh month, not the first month, which was back there in March or April. They claim that the new year is starting in the seventh month and doesn't even mention anything in the first month at all. We see a holy day in the book of Leviticus chapter 23 on the seventh month, but it's talking about the memorial of blowing of trumpets. But notice their holiday, Rosh Hashanah, has nothing to do with trumpets at all. They don't remind the people to blow the trumpets or to hear the trumpets being blown. It's all a New Year's celebration for the Jewish synagogue. But notice the dates here, how they give themselves two days for this festival, the 26th and the 27th. Now, Moses didn't give us two days or the father didn't give Moses two days. He was only given one day, and that was the first day of the month, which we learned in the book of Enoch that the first day of the month was when the new moon appears. Well, the new moon appeared on the 27th of September, which would have made the 28th the first day of the month. And when you count, that would have made October the 7th as the 10th day of the month which Leviticus 23 and 27 talks about as the day of atonement. But you see, the Jewish synagogue had its people celebrating on the 5th of October instead of the 7th. So once again, they had their people celebrating their festival days on the wrong day. That day they were told that we will actually be killed if we work on that day. Or cut off if we don't afflict our souls on that day. They told them the wrong day, October the 5th, which means most of the people were back at work on Friday, October the 7th. The thing about it, back over here in Leviticus 23, you see verse 29 says anybody who does not afflict their souls on atonement day will be cut off. And anybody who works on that day will be destroyed. We see that in verse 30. Notice that the Jewish community is not telling them to afflict their souls on atonement day, but it tells them to fast on atonement day. The thing about it, when we come over to Jubilees chapter 50, which gives us the rules of the Sabbath day, we see down in verse 12 and verse 13 that anybody who fasts on a Sabbath day will die. So not only are they telling the Jewish people the wrong day, but it's also telling them to do something that will actually get them killed on that day. So it's a damned if you do or a damned if you don't kind of thing. Either way, following the Jewish leaders will actually cause you to die. Then you have Sukkot or Booths, which they have starting on October the 10th when it should have started on October the 12th, making the great day October the 19th in the year 2022. They celebrated it on October the 17th. Once again, celebrating on the wrong day. That's supposed to be the festival in which we get our release. Well, we don't get a release or our independence if we're not doing it in the right way on the correct day. Then they have another festival, Simchat Torah, on October the 18th, and that brings us around to Hanukkah. Now, in the recording of this video, I'm not able to determine 
when the festival of Hanukkah is. Remember, we have to wait till the new moon appears. It's just now November the 20th. But they have already determined that it's going to be December the 19th. Again, they're not using the moon to determine their festival days. They're using their complicated system to determine their holy days. That's how they're able to pick festival days 10, 20, 30, even 100 years out. How are they going to know when the new moon will appear on that day? They don't, nor do they care, because that's not how the Jewish calendar works. But anyway, you notice how they celebrate the Feast of Hanukkah with their eight candle menorah. A menorah doesn't have eight candles. There's no such thing as an eight candle menorah. A menorah has seven candles representing the seven churches, but They've actually added a candle and they've added their own celebration by lighting a candle every day for eight days. When the book of 2 Maccabees, where this holy day comes from, tells us to celebrate it like we did the festival of booths with singing and palm branches in our hands. So once again, they're telling us to do it in the wrong way. There's no mention of a eight candle menorah or lighting anything for this celebration that we know as the Feast of Dedication or Hanukkah. So now do you understand why they are Gentiles and called the synagogue of Satan? It's because anybody that goes to them for information are led astray or led into keeping the wrong feast days in the wrong day in the wrong way. They actually have their people worshiping the golden calf all while they think they are worshiping our father and keeping his laws. They aren't doing any of them right. They're celebrating the Sabbath day on the wrong day, along with all of the feast days on the wrong day. And they're not doing them according to the scripture. They're just making up stuff. And because those Jewish leaders are not going to change their ways. No matter who tells them and how much they are told, the only way to make them stop is what we read about in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 4. So we'll continue to pray for their people, those who are led astray by what they're doing over there. But as far as the religion as a whole, Zechariah, John in the book of Revelation, and the Messiah said it best. So... We'll just leave it at that. Shalawama. Oh, not to mention what they did to the language. Y Yiddish is not real, y'all. It might as well be pig Latin. Shalawama. <laughs>